Hello everyone, and welcome to another video from our channel, Immortal News. In this video, we will be bringing you a list of famous celebrities who have passed away today, July 18th, and in the last few days. Additionally, we have some tributes planned for the second part of the video, so please stay tuned. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like. Number 11. Jerry Bradley A driving force behind the Nashville sound and country music Jerry Owen Bradley, a stalwart of the Nashville music scene and an influential member of the Country Music Hall of Fame, passed away on July 17th at the age of 83. Bradley was part of the legendary Bradley family, who significantly contributed to the creation and growth of Nashville's music industry and Music Row area. Bradley's career began in Forest Hills Music, a publishing company he started with his uncle, Harold. He moved on to produce and engineer records for luminaries such as Loretta Lynn, The Who, and more at Bradley's Barn Studio, owned by him and his father. During his tenure as VP of Nashville Operations at RCA from 1973 to 1983, Bradley worked with renowned artists and shaped country music's fabric. His work on the groundbreaking album Wanted the Outlaws led to its becoming the first platinum-selling country album certified by the Recording Industry Association of America. In his post-RCA career, Bradley brought fresh talent to Opryland USA and the Opryland Music Group, including Kenny Chesney and Dean Dillon. Chesney credited Bradley for having a profound and unmeasurable impact on his life and many others in the creative community. Throughout his over five-decade career, Bradley also served as the president of the Country Music Association and became a charter alumnus of leadership music. Bradley's impact on country music was profound, with his dedication, talent, and pioneering efforts making a lasting mark on the industry. He leaves behind a formidable legacy in the Nashville music scene, forever tied to the Nashville sound he helped create. Tributes to Jerry Bradley. Number 10, DJ Dion, a pioneering voice and unforgettable legacy in ghetto house music, DJ Dion, pioneering DJ and producer, known for his influential role in shaping the ghetto house sound, passed away on July 18th. While the cause of death was not specified, the artist, born Dion Boyd, had been dealing with well-documented health issues such as diabetes and pneumonia in recent years. Dion began his musical journey in the 90s, blending elements of Chicago house music, hip-hop, and Miami bass to help create the distinctive ghetto house genre. His debut record, 1994's Funk City, released by Dance Mania, featured hits like Day Bomb and House Omatic, and quickly established him as an important figure in the electronic music scene. Throughout his career, DJ Dion continued to release music through key electronic music labels such as Projects, Databass, Tech Life, and Numbers. His significant contribution to the genre coupled with his relentless creativity, left a significant impact on the world of electronic music. His death was announced through his official Facebook page, surrounded by family and friends, marking the end of a remarkable career that influenced generations of DJs and producers. Tributes to DJ Dion. Number 9. Sue Marks, a visionary storyteller and pillar of Detroit's film industry. Sue Marks, the legendary self-taught filmmaker and shining beacon of Detroit's film industry, passed away on July 17th at the age of 92. Renowned for her profound commitment to telling meaningful stories, Marks's career spanned over three decades, producing more than 100 films and winning an Academy Award for her documentary short, Young at Heart. She brought Detroit's stories to life on Channel 7 including award-winning projects like Kids Space, AIDS 101, Detroit 300, DIA Salute, and numerous Detroit Zoo specials. Her photography work featured several eminent figures, such as the Kennedys, Bob Seeger, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., cementing her place as an important cultural archivist. Marx was honored with more than 20 Emmys, 11 Cine Golden Eagles, 
and an Award of Excellence from American Women in Radio and Television, now the Alliance for Women in Media. Her relentless passion and resilience inspire a legacy of audacious creativity and undying dedication to her craft. She leaves behind her three daughters and her beloved grandchildren, her special angel, caregiver Teresa Pacala, and her late husband Hank Marks remain steadfast parts of her life story. Marx's light will continue to shine in the Detroit film industry and beyond, a testament to her indomitable spirit and love for storytelling. Tributes to Sue Marx. Number 8. Beverly Moss, SPAT Preserving New York's Architectural Treasures and Shaping a City's Legacy Beverly Moss SPAT, the passionate defender and protector of New York City's historical landmarks, passed away on July 17 at the age of 99. The architect of New York's historical preservation movement, she served as chairwoman of the city's Landmarks Preservation Commission from 1974 to 1978 leading it through years of controversies. Spat was renowned as a tireless advocate for the city's aesthetic and cultural heritage, pushing back against real estate and political interests to protect distinguished buildings and historic districts. Her tenure saw the designation of over 800 landmarks, from Broadway theaters to public buildings and scenic spaces. Notably, Spat's leadership was instrumental in the preservation of Grand Central Terminal a victory she hailed as the most important decision in the preservation movement. She continued her advocacy even in retirement, fighting proposals that threatened landmark sites. Her relentless commitment has had a lasting impact on New York City's architectural landscape and stands as a testament to her devotion to civic duty. Spat's legacy is carried on by her three children and three grandchildren. Her lifelong commitment to preserving the city's historical and cultural treasures was an inspiration to many and she will be remembered for her remarkable contribution to the city she loved. Tributes to Beverly Moss Spat. Number 7. Yvonne Littlewood, a trailblazer in television entertainment. Yvonne Littlewood, a pioneering force in British television entertainment, passed away on July 7th in London at the age of 95. Her remarkable career, spanning five decades, broke new ground for women in the industry and left a lasting legacy on BBC programming. Born in Maidstone, Kent in 1927, Littlewood's early passion for the arts took root in her involvement in the Ross Operatic and Dramatic Society, fueled by her parents' participation and her dance education at the Royal Academy. Her professional journey began at the BBC in 1944 as a typist, gradually ascending to become the first female producer in BBC Light Entertainment. A pivotal moment of her career was in 1963 when she directed the Eurovision Song Contest broadcast live from BBC Television Centre in London. Her initiative also helped launch the Jazz 625 series for BBC Two. Littlewood is most renowned for producing and directing light entertainment shows featuring prominent artists like Petula Clark and Nana Moscuri. However, her longest and most notable association was with the Val Dunican Music Show, where she beautifully orchestrated the musical narrative. Her contributions have not only revolutionized television entertainment, but also carved a path for future generations of women in the industry. Littlewood's passing leaves an indelible void in the world of television, but her legacy continues to inspire. Tributes to Yvonne Littlewood. Number 6. Harry G. Frankfurt, a philosopher and unconventional truth-teller, Harry G. Frankfurt, a philosopher renowned for his exploration of human will and the phenomenon of dishonesty, died on July 17 in Santa Monica at the age of 94. His death was due to a multitude of causes, including congestive heart failure, according to his daughter Kate Frankfurt. 
Frankfurt made a name for himself in the field of philosophy with his revolutionary papers from the 1960s through the 2000s. He centered the human will, people's motivating wants and desires, as the crucial element in understanding freedom, moral responsibility, personal identity, and life's meaning. Frankfurt's seminal works on the concept of free will, particularly his papers in 1969 and 1971, significantly altered the debates surrounding the subject. However, Frankfurt achieved broader cultural recognition for his astute analysis of a form of dishonesty he termed as bullshit. He articulated this in his surprise bestseller, On Bullshit, in which he differentiated it from lying, arguing that bullshit is worse as it is utterly indifferent to the truth. Frankfurt's career spanned several prestigious academic institutions, including the Rockefeller Institute, Yale, and Princeton. His thought-provoking philosophical explorations and the popularity of his unconventional bestseller have indelibly marked his legacy in the world of philosophy. Tributes to Harry G. Frankfurt Number 5. Angelo Mozillo the controversial pillar of America's subprime mortgage crisis. Angelo Mozillo, former CEO of Countrywide Financial and a central figure in the 2008 financial crisis, passed away due to natural causes on July 16th at the age of 84. His death was announced by the Mozillo Family Foundation, a charity organization founded by Mozillo and his late wife, Phyllis. Mozillo co-founded Countrywide Financial in 1969, with the promise of approving home loans for Americans who had previously been rejected. While the company stayed true to this promise, it also laid the groundwork for the 2007 subprime mortgage crisis. By granting mortgages to borrowers with insufficient credit, the company incited high default rates, triggering a wave of foreclosures that culminated in the financial crisis of 2008. Mozilla's career was marred by controversy. He was among the executives charged by the Securities and Exchange Commission for defrauding investors by concealing the risks of the company's mortgages. In 2010, he settled these fraud charges by agreeing to pay $67.5 million to the SEC. Regardless of the controversy, Mozilla played an undeniably significant role in shaping the American housing finance landscape. His legacy etched in the annals of economic history due to his pivotal role in the financial crisis. Tributes to Angelo Mazzillo. Number 4. Stuart Epperson A trailblazer in religious and conservative broadcasting. Stuart Epperson, co-founder of Salem Media Group, and a key figure in conservative and commercial religious radio broadcasting, passed away this week at the age of 86 on July 17th. The cause of death was not disclosed. Epperson, alongside his brother-in-law Edward Atzinger, established Salem Media in the middle 1980s. Together they transformed Salem into a formidable broadcast outlet that catapulted influential conservative talk show hosts into dominance across the airwaves from the 1980s through to the early 2000s. Epperson's impact on broadcasting cannot be overstated. His vision and leadership helped shape the landscape of religious and conservative radio, providing a platform for voices that resonated with a significant portion of the American populace. While challenges from cable news and digital media, as well as a shift in the radio advertising market, have seen Salem's influence wane in recent years. Epperson's legacy in the industry remains intact. He was a pioneer who forever changed the course of radio broadcasting, leaving a lasting imprint on American media. Tributes to Stuart Epperson. Number 3. Robert Budzinski, a pillar of French football and stalwart of FC Nantes. Robert Budzinski, a stalwart of French football 
who left an indelible mark as a player, and later as the emblematic sporting director of FC Nantes, passed away on July 17th at the age of 83. Starting his professional career with RC Lens, Budzinski moved on to Nantes, earning 11 caps for the French national team in the middle 1960s. As an exceptional defender, he represented France in the 1966 World Cup. His career was abruptly cut short due to a tackle that resulted in a double fracture in December 1968. Eleven months later, a training incident forced him to hang up his boots permanently. However, Budzinski's contributions to football did not end there. Becoming the sporting director of FC Nantes in January 1970, he played a crucial role in the club's transformation and success, amassing several titles behind the scenes. His commitment to the club lasted more than three decades, culminating in his retirement in August 2015. A celebrated figure in French football, Budzinski dedicated his life to FC Nantes, embodying the club's spirit and contributing significantly to its legacy. Tributes to Robert Budzinski. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 3. Tom O'Connor, a pioneering humorist and beloved game show host. Tom O'Connor, a celebrated British comedian and renowned host of classic game shows such as Crosswits, Password, and Name That Tune, passed away at the age of 81. His family announced to the BBC that he died in a Buckinghamshire hospital on July 18, 2021, after battling Parkinson's disease for over a decade. O'Connor began his career journey as a math and music teacher before lighting up the working men's clubs with his performances at night. His talent shone through on the show Opportunity Knocks, winning it three times and catapulting him to fame on The Comedians, where he regaled audiences with his stand-up routines. However, it was his charismatic presence as a game show host in the 70s and 80s that cemented his place as a beloved figure on British television. Beyond his hosting prowess, O'Connor expanded his artistic portfolio with acting, notably his recurring role as a Catholic priest named Father Tom on the BBC series Doctors from 2000 to 2004. He later ventured into appearing on game shows himself, earning an award for his 100 appearances on Countdown and winning the Channel 4 show Celebrity Come Dine With Me in 2010. His son, Steve Finan O'Connor, remembered him as a unique comedian who was light years ahead of political correctness, highlighting his legacy as a trailblazer in comedy. Tom O'Connor's passing leaves a gap in the world of entertainment, but his humor and charm live on. Tributes to Tom O'Connor. Number 2. Alex Rocco, a resonant voice and memorable character in film and television. Alex Rocco, whose distinctively gravelly voice and adept character portrayals left an indelible mark on Hollywood, passed away on July 18, 2015. The esteemed actor, known for his iconic role as the audacious casino owner Mo Green in The Godfather, was 79. His manager, Susan Zachary, attributed his passing to cancer. Born Alexander Federico Petriconi Jr. on February 29, 1936 in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Rocco brought a unique and engaging energy to every role he played. Despite his limited screen time in The Godfather, 1972, his memorable lines and the unique Boston attitude he brought to the character cemented his reputation in Hollywood. His performance prowess extended beyond the mafia genre, earning him an Emmy Award in 1990 for his portrayal of a charismatic talent agent in the sitcom The Famous Teddy Z. Rocco's diverse career spanned roles in films like the Friends of Eddie Coyle, That Thing You Do, and voice work in A Bug's Life. He also had memorable stints in television, most notably in the long-running NBC series The Facts of Life in the 1980s. He is survived by his wife, actress Shannon Wilcox, a son, a daughter, a stepson, a stepdaughter, a sister, and four grandchildren. His legacy, 
marked by unforgettable performances and a remarkable ability to bring authenticity to his characters, continues to resonate in the world of film and television. Tributes to Alex Rocco. Number 1. Monty Norman, the musical genius behind the iconic James Bond theme. Famed composer Monty Norman, whose musical brilliance became synonymous with the James Bond franchise, passed away on July 11, 2022, following a brief illness at the age of 94. Norman's instantly recognizable music, notably the James Bond theme, is etched in the annals of cinematic history and continues to evoke intrigue and suspense synonymous with the famous secret agent 007. Norman, originally Monty Nocerovich, was born in 1928 to Jewish immigrants in London's East End. He began his career as a singer for popular big bands in the 1950s and early 1960s before transitioning into composing songs for musicals. He contributed lyrics to Make Me an Offer and both music and lyrics to Wolf Mankiewicz's Espresso Bongo. His most famous work, the James Bond theme, debuted in the inaugural Bond film, Dr. No, in 1962. Norman based the notable phrase on an earlier piece, Bad Sign, Good Sign, from a musical adaptation of V.S. Naipaul's A House for Mr. Biswas. Despite some misattributions to John Barry, who provided a jazz arrangement for the film, Norman successfully defended his authorship of the Bond theme in court. Norman's diverse career also encompassed scoring the Bob Hope comedy Call Me Buona, the 1976 TV series Dickens of London, and several successful West End musicals, notably Songbook in 1979. His first wife was the actor Diana Coupland, renowned for her role in the 70s sitcom Bless This House, who passed away in 2006. Monty Norman's legacy resonates every time the distinctive notes of the Bond theme are heard, forever connecting him with one of cinema's most enduring characters. His contributions to musical theater and the wider world of entertainment remain testament to his immense talent. Tributes to Monty Norman. We kindly ask you to honor the lives of these remarkable individuals by showing your support and appreciation. Please like this video and continue watching as we pay respect to the legacies they've left behind.